Hello everyone. Now I am going to present to you about open access publishing. Let's define what is open access first. Open access means free access to information and unrestricted use of electronic resources for everyone. The prerequisites are it should be digital, it should be available on public internet and it should also be properly licensed with the open license. Maybe you can say it's a creative common license. So all the copyrights vested with the author will make it possible give with the license for everyone to use for any public good purpose. Let's see why open access. The first and foremost thing as a researcher is we get more visibility to our work. Because of the visibility we get more citations because everybody will be getting access to it. They will read it and then cite. And then the next one is because of our research is publicly funded we the public funded research which we produce will be publicly available. And because our research is publicly available this can also be helping in the policy formulation. And more benefits are there because of the openness. Let's come into the towards the open access publishing, how it is happens. It happens with the journals, either you directly submit to the journal and publish, will come later, there is another route. This route which I am going to say is open access journal is a gold route. With that it also has other var uh, varieties of names, golden open access journals, the gold open access journals hybrid open access journals, delayed open access journals, bronze open access journals, diamond open access journals. So what is gold open access journals? These are all on digital, online and they charge, the publishers charge you article processing charges and then make the articles available for public to use even for the commercial purpose. Because they are making it available for the commercial purpose as well they charge huge amount of article processing charges that may go up to thousand dollars. And there is another model called hybrid open access journals. Those are all subscribed journals. The readers have to subscribe either personally or through the institutional library access mechanism. But as a author you have the, uh, you can publish under open access by paying article processing charges to that. If you don't want to make it openly available, you can make it closed access. You don't need to pay anything. You have to sign a copyright agreement with the publisher. And there is delayed open access journals, mostly the scholarly societies and the others. They publish the journals, but because they want to keep the subscription also as well to have the fund access to those societies, they make it under embargo probably may up to 6 months or not beyond 12 months. And the bronze open access journals are the journals which are free to, free to use in the sense free to read but because there is no license you cannot use for whatever fashion you would like to use it. And the most important is the diamond open access journals. This doesn't charge, these journals doesn't charge you any article processing charges for the publication and it is also freely available for all the readers. Then how they get the money and they have the endowment trust or other models of mechanism sponsorship to uh, run the journal. And I was saying about the other route of open access that earlier I said about the golden open access route and there is another green open access route. What is green open access route? Green open access route is through the making available your articles under open access repositories. Open access repositories are mostly institutional repositories or a thematic repositories 
which will allow it to be populated with the prints of prints mean the post prints post prints are the post peer review once you submit an article to a journal it gets it is subject to the peer review once peer review is completed the publisher or the editor will send back to you for incorporation of the comments and once that is final that is the post print and that goes to the typesetting and it will be published eventually as a publisher's version there you because you if you pay the article processing charges nothing no problem no copyright issues you the authors retain it but if you are not paying any article processing charges under the green open access route those you have to sign a copyright agreement with them and while signing it you may ask to make uh, a favor in the sense because you are giving your article for that journal to get published uh, you will ask that they should permit you to allow it to be deposited in the institutional repository most of the institutes have their own policy csir has its own policy in india icr has its policy and now the government of india is also coming with the science technology innovation policy 2020 which is under the still draft there they are talking about this open access route under green route and there is another repositories which are gaining more importance is the pre print repositories i was saying about the post prints the pre prints are the reverse of it it is a first draft the article which you make it before submitting to a journal is a pre print repository you put into the pre print repository there you can claim the priority because there is a time lag between the from submission to the publication so to avoid that time lag you can always go through this route called pre print repository deposition where you will get the priority means public will know you are the first to publish that article and then you will have a public peer review it will they in traditionally only few uh, sp- subject specialists will be uh, reading your paper and giving comment and that is a peer review happening uh, not more than 3 to 4 reviewers but under the preprint repository it is widely available for everyone who are on the internet can comment on it so that will help you to improve your articles and the bio archive which is supported by the zuckerberg uh, initiative and med med archive or the, these two are now gaining more importance due to the covid you might have seen read in the newspapers about the preprints they they are mentioning um, about the preprints uh, which the instead of sending sending to public peer review first they are as soon as they publish they make it they have dep- they are depositing in this preprint repository recently our uh, the hyderabad based covaxin people also submitted their article in a into this med archive i guess uh, for the preprint repository by archive or med archive and these journals i was saying that it will be made available under some license what license these journals are using is they are using the creative commons license creative commons is a non profit organization which has developed different licensing terms and then also made into a pictorial representation for the human to identify and understand and it also has a machine readable Uh, options and a uh, legal documents all these three layers are put into this license mechanism but everything under the copyright la- law of the land you as a author you as a creator have the copyrights with you and using any of this license you make it available for people to use it if i create an article and submit uh, and choose the create a common license cc by it has it means that it is highly uh, higher at uh, higher level of the access wherein the even uh, commercial ac- aspects also can be taken and there is a least option where no commercial and no derivation you can see on the left of my screen there is a copyright c symbol with all right reserved in red 
and it is growing up with a broader public domain with a green so these are all different layer different types of licensing and as per the author's wish they can choose any of it but preferably they should go for a some license which is open license in sense it can it should be available for free mixing with the other uh, articles or the other media which is under the same licensing so that uh, any mashups or remixing can be done uh, for that example it is it mostly done by the teachers for to teach the children they may take the sound from one source picture from another source and then they also make some narrative and they from the different sources make it avail make it a one mashup or a remix and then give to the students to uh, during their class lectures but if it is not licensed uh, with a free licensing that is a open free culture license it cannot be mixed so it's better to go for the license which has the option to remix that is cc by uh, non commercial share alike and above you can use it it is up to the authors uh, the shodh ganga thesis repository in india is using creative commons uh, cc by license non commercial aspects uh, under for their website all this open publishing and openness uh, as the roots from the free and open source software i would like to present to you the public knowledge project from canada which has created and then made the software openly available for the general publication or scholarly communications open journal systems open monograph press open preprint systems open conference systems and open harvester system open journal systems is the most popular journal system which using which you can launch your own journal it has all the workflow embedded into that right from the submission till the archiving what happens at times the journals may cease to publish because of the various reasons so using this journal systems which has the inbuilt protocol for metadata harvesting up to the full text level the the harvesters uh, will harvest all the records and keep it available at one place and once there is a trigger that uh, the journal is no longer existing that all those uh, material will be openly made available on the public internet open monograph press is another software wherein you can collaborate with all other authors and make a book publication and open preprint systems is a new software which they develop to host the preprint repositories open conferencing systems is now we have this pandemic we are seeing lots of ha- conferences are happening online and this open conferencing system has the another mode of open publishing wherein you are all slides all of your papers which we are going to present there will be again archived and can be placed at a online and open harvesting systems is the software which will regularly go around through their bots will harvest the data and once you configure suppose the icr has its own inter interoperable harvester system it goes and gets fetches the metadata from various sources which has been in the uh, indexed into that software so you can have a thematic things you can have a specific uh, subject wise or a region wise or a uh, organizational wise whatever you f- would like to use all this harvesting systems can be used coming to this uh, the initiatives towards the latest initiative i want to say the on this towards this open access the first open access which we have skipped is the budapest open access initiative 2001 budapest it has it started there where the group of people have assembled and thought of making the new launching new journals which will help the uh, scholarly communications more accessible to the pe- publicly avail- available on public internet now the latest initiatives 
is the plan s which says which is now working towards making the open access is the only default all the scholarship which we are going to read will be freely available and how it is going to be made freely available is being discussed with the stakeholders and they are coming up with various various models to go for it and from india side we have the stip 2020 it's still in the draft science technology and innovation policy towards uh, the push from that is that it is going to recommend it is already recommended in the draft but it is going to be more uh, as a order from coming days that the post prints which i was saying the post peer review uh, manuscripts has to be invariably deposited into the central repositories which the stip is going to establish still uh, we have the science central repository for the bst dbt and then we have the csr repositories we have the icr repositories and then there is another organization or the initiative you can say supported by the unesco originating from the latin america it is amelica amelica is working for the making sustainability and bibliodiversity as the default openness open access should be more sustainable it should not involve much costly cost into that there are the free softwares and some other tools which they were not we were not having has been taken up by this amelica amelica has uh, made a markup tool using that with any other formats can be easily made not only a pdf articles which we see in the journals it can be html xml or epubs which is through the kindle versions or a mobile versions or smart viewer versions so all these can be done using this freely available again open source software amelica xml saying all this i would like to end here talk no you should think about the other side of the open access publishing that is much of the uh, bad name is coming because of the some questionable publishers questionable publishers are prob- probably they know or they don't know that uh, instead of uh, making the scholarship for the public good they are going to have the private initiatives or private interest in which they motive is to have the uh, profit of publication because it doesn't cost you much to host a journal and these journal publishers will will come to uh, will reach out to the authors and saying that they are going to sub, uh, publish in a quicker uh, time and the authors who are not uh, not in a position to wait for some time they are become the prey to uh, to these publishers and they are charging hefty amounts at times and without any peer review without any uh, inter, uh, inputs from their side the whatever you write and submit is going to be published without any uh, their interventions where their because it it is not peer reviewed and it is just directly published and there is no scope for the improvement unlike the preprints where you have the versions you can have n number of versions to improve it but here once it is published you cannot improve on it only th- if it is uh, questioned you may have to retract but it is once published it is there and uh, at times it also happens that the publisher doesn't want to uh, retract uh, the uh, paper which we have published so i would like you to look at this think check submit website and look at the uh, checklist which they have mentioned and uh, get satisfied for yourself and look at the journals to whom which you are going to submit these open access journals are legitimate or, or it is only it they are just there for their business or it is going for going for the public good so i end here i would strongly urge you to look at this site think check and submit thank you very much